Welcome to the Land of House Life channel. I'm Seth. When I went to bed last night, it was 45 degrees. This morning, it's 9 degrees. I just uh, checked the thermometer and the uh, wind chill out here is well below zero. Um, but I've noticed that my solar panels are up here completely covered with snow. And so let's go ahead and see if we can't get those uncovered real quick. Um, my heat is of course running full force and I want to be able to um, supplement that with solar as much as I can. So let's step up here real quick. I've got a squeegee, which is my uh, weapon of choice for snow removal. All right, I'm gonna set you here on the camera tripod and uh, head up here. It's really cold. Whew. It's always cool when these little ice crystals form. They just fall down so easy. Once the panel is exposed, it will begin to heat up pretty quick and it will melt off the rest of this. And that's all the time I have for getting snow off of the panels because it's so cold out here. I will show you an update in a moment from the warmth of the house. Sneak peek of what's coming to the mainland house channel. I have a second array coming up. Um, <laughs> I had some issues. The uh, bottom two panels here are a different size and brand. And so it's thrown off my whole array a little bit. But anyway, it should be just fine. The uh, watt value is the same. All right, um, so the plan for the solar here, the lower three kilowatts is gonna be feeding my current system, which has two grid tie limiter inverters, and that just basically supplements the uh, main house panel. And then the second 3K is gonna be going to that uh, Vestwoods battery and inverter that I showed you in a previous video. And so uh, basically I'm gonna have a 15 kilowatt hour battery and an eight kilowatt inverter that is um, supplementing the house with uh, a critical loads panel. So basically that, um, I'll show you that setup here. I don't have it quite finished for the main channel yet, but I can at least show you an update here on Land of House Life so you'll know what it looks like. Oh, so much warmer in here. All right, I think I'm done outside for the day because it's far too cold. And here is the system I was referring to. I am in the midst of getting everything going, but uh, just to run through it real quick, the ground is already right there. The solar wire is gonna come up from that same hole. It will go behind the battery here to a disconnect, and then it will go up here and uh, skirt around into the system. So I actually already have uh, these two wires right here are the solar, and uh, they go in here to a PV in, and so the inverter then takes the power from the battery, which comes in from right here. And so I've got all that set up. This is a um, surge protection device. Um, so the battery has its own breaker here as well. So let's see, there's communication. It has, uh, so the uh, input from the grid and input from the battery then goes here out this way to the critical loads panel. So I'm gonna be removing some of my house circuits and putting them over here. And that means the inverter will then run those circuits until the battery drops low. And then grid will kick on. And basically it will uh, send a line from grid, which is down here. It will zap around here, go in, feed the system, and then the same outputs from the grid, which were uh, initially from the inverter, will then feed this as well. Anyway, it'll make more sense on the main video. This is a 15 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Vestwoods. And uh, once I get the updated communications cable, I should be able to turn this system on and uh, power the house. I'm basically just going to put the critical loads of uh, from like here down. Um, I probably will move over the workshop as well, um, but basically, those, I think 17 breakers will be up here. 
and that will allow me to run things. Now, this has a switch so that as soon as the battery is low, it just immediately swaps over. I think it's 10 milliseconds. Um, so even my computers won't notice um, all of that. Looks like clearing the panels has helped. We're now running at 1,000 watts out there, which is good. Now, as soon as those panels are fully thawed out, we should see about 2,500 watts today because my heat is running at full force. So you can see yesterday we were seeing about 1700 watts and then just now at 10 o'clock we're seeing the uh, power come back out again. About 30 minutes later it's 10 degrees and the panels have mostly lost their snow. Um, you can see we're only doing about 900 and something watts and the battery says full down here. Um, so my inverters are only able to produce about five or six hundred watts out each so um, whenever the battery is full it'll do that sometimes anyway um, it's nice to know that the power is back up and running helping my power bill here on a very cold day I just wanted to bring you along on a very short vlog so things have been going pretty smooth here at the house I have all this solar stuff going on and I'm also talking to a company to hopefully source a bigger grid tie limiter inverter for the outdoor power shed. I would show you my current system in this video, but it's far too cold for that. And I want to keep that uh, insulation good and uh, warm out there. Uh, it's in the 40s in my shed, and I don't want to introduce 10 degrees out there. So, um, but yes, yeah, so hopefully later on I can have a, um, a couple of inverters out there in the power shed that can supply more than you know, four or 500 watts at a time. So whenever my critical loads are being run by this inverter, I will only have a few of the 240 volt circuits up here. And so if I can have a, um, a grid tie limiter inverter that can put out, let's say a thousand watts instead, then I would have the ability to do 2000 watts out there and hopefully have a lithium iron phosphate battery because I actually have a test circuit coming up where I will be sucking air from the crawl space out there into the power shed. So my crawl space stays around 50 degrees even today whenever it is uh, 10 degrees outside. And so I figure if I have a little uh, heater, a little a, um, a relay with a temperature sensor and a computer fan, and I make a little housing around of my conduit pipes, should be able to pull the warm air from the crawl space into my power shed and keep it above freezing so I can use lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's a mouthful. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little update. I'll have more here on Land to House Life so you can keep track of me and the family and what kind of projects we are into. All right, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.